Me, I've been involved in the home-based business industry for probably 30 some odd years. But where I started from was um, it somebody that, that was scared of his own shadow. I hated going out and talking to people. I, I did not like being around people. And so through the process of me um, uh, just learning, forcing myself to do the things that I was uncomfortable with. Why? Because I wanted the results. I wanted the outcome. I built houses for a living. I knew I couldn't do that forever because my back was going to give out. Plus the fact that is if I stopped doing what I did, if I stopped building houses, I didn't make any money. And that bothered the heck out of me because I, I had four boys and a wife that I had to support. And so the ability to create a passive residual income was very appealing to me. So what is appealing to you? You have to figure it out what it is for you. And I want you to understand also, a lot of times people think about their dreams and their goals. I've got a dream board over here on the wall. I have goals over here on the wall. I've got pictures of my grandparents, my grandchildren. And yes, that's important to me. That's why I build it. What's important to me, my dreams and goals. But honestly, we as human beings will do more to avoid pain than gain pleasure. And the biggest challenge with building a, a large income in this industry is prospecting. You're going to have to become uncomfortable. And if you will do more to avoid pain than to, to gain pleasure, that means you're going to avoid prospecting because of the pain it gives you. So you have to also flip that around and, and, and attach a pain to the, if you don't prospect, and that's what I did. I was very good at, and still am today. I, I, yes, I've, I've got the dreams of gold, but let me tell you, I'm not going to do this for a nice car or vacation. I'm going to do this for the fear that I'm going to end up broke or still building houses or, 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 or have a, a, you know, a, an injury that I can't do my job anymore. And therefore I'm not able to, uh, to support me and my family. And I'm going to end up 70, 80 years old, uh, as a greeter at the, at the grocery, the, you know, Walmart or whatever. And, and that's not acceptable for me. So that pain, that fear was so strong with me it forced me to do the things that I was uncomfortable with because as human beings, we're going to do, we're going to avoid pain to get, because uh, we don't like the pain. And, and, and so understanding that is very important to you. If you're not willing to do the things I'm telling you, you're going to have to fight through it and get through it. Hey, when I first started, I, before we had the internet, I'd walk around with, with a, a golf tees, a little tees you put golf balls on in my left pocket. And my goal was to say hello to one person a day. Just hello. That was a stretch for me. That was a challenge for me. That gave me a hot flash. I would sweat. I'd get so anxiety going out there trying to say hello to a stranger. For some of you, you're, you're outgoing people. That's normal to you. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And so I had to train myself to do something that was uncomfortable. Why? Because I wanted the result. And I wanted the result that was going to stop me from having the result of if I didn't build it, what's going to happen to my life in 10, 20, 30 years from now? And, and so I was able to do it. And then I would, I, I would, I would have a golf tee in my left pocket. I'd say hello to three people a day. And that was my success. And then I said, hello, how are you? And I, I, I got better at it. And so prospecting is the key to this business. If you understand it's a numbers game, it will be much easier. It's all about the numbers. The more people you share this with, the more money you're going to make. Period. That's it. The more people you share it with, the more people are going to find value in the product. And the more people that find value in the product, the more people that will get a result. And the more people that get a result, the more people are going to share it. So it's, it goes back to the 80-20 rule. 80% of the people do something. You got a 20 people, 20 percent are going to do something at all. 20% of that 20% are going to do something substantial. 20% of that 20% is going to do something extraordinary. That's the numbers. And I know as a person that's scared of my own shadow, I'm not outgoing. I, I built houses for a living. And, and I know, knew for a fact that I didn't have to be good. I knew for a fact that I could find people that were better than me. See, I don't, I'm, it's not a, all about you and it's all, all about me. I knew that I could find people that were good at talking to people, that had that liked to people, that were outgoing, that had a, a sphere of influence. I got two friends I've had my whole life. That's it. I, I'm, I'm not a real, uh, I don't have people over my house. I'm, I'm kind of a loner, so to speak. But I, I still built huge teams in network marketing. Why? Because I pushed myself because I wanted the results. 
That's what's very important to you. So when prospecting, you got to understand you all have skills. I mentioned that I'm, I'm scared of my own shadow. I had a friend of mine that we would go out to dinner and he's still a friend of mine today. We go out to dinner and we turn around like, where the heck is Mel? And we look and Mel's sitting at a table eating French fries off somebody's plate. And it's like, who does that? I mean, you come back to the table 15 minutes later. Oh, oh, who, you know, who was that? Was that a friend of yours? No, I just walked in. The lady had nice shoes. I sat down and started talking to him. And this is a guy that's so comfortable around people that he would sit down at somebody's and eat French fries off their plate. Who does that? Mel does. And some of you might be like Mel. You might be good with people. You might love people. You might be outgoing with people. Then use that skill. Why would you hide all that behind a, ca a, a computer? You have ability with people, people, you're charismatic, people like you, you like people. Um, uh, I, I listen to some of the things that some people say, and that would bother me if I said that, because I've, I've got a low self-image. Hey, look, I get better. I read books every day. I know I have to get better. I grow to become something that I'm not today, because what got me here today is not going to get me where I'm going. Plus, I don't spell well. So me on a computer is not a good thing. And, and, and I don't look good. So what on the, on the, the, the YouTube or on videos is not a good thing. But you know what? I do things that are uncomfortable because I want the results. So you're going to have some choices to make. And I want to encourage you. If none of these fit you, you're going to have to get out of your own way. You're going to have to do something that's discomfort to you because some way, shape or form, you've got to introduce these people and you have a dream. It hurts me. It's not in my head, my dream. It's in my heart. It's in my gut. And I have to have it. When it goes from your head to your heart, and if you don't have that yet, get on some of the Zoom. Get on the Zoom. Get on more than just what we, we do here. You need to learn this product. You need to learn this industry. You need to learn that no matter where you came from, you can talk to enough people to find some people that will join you. Everybody can. It's just numbers. It does not matter. Take out, who cares if they tell you no? They're not paying your bills. They're not the one that's going to keep me from being 70 years old and broke. They're not going to, so I don't care. I believe in people. I love people, but it's to me, it's numbers. And that's the only thing that, the only uh, a skill set uh, that I've, I've grown. I read a lot of books. I read and listen to books all the, all the time. So you can get better at it. You can get better at, you know, me. I'm, I'm not so harsh on people. I'm more loving. I'm more understanding. Um, I don't put people down. I'm positive. I didn't used to be that way. And, and so you're going to have some choices. So belly to belly is probably one of my favorite things, even though it scares the crap out of me. And it's my most, it's, it goes against every bit of my being. But belly, belly, people talk about it now. I, I hear it all the time. The only reason why people talk so much about it is one, is because they want to make prospecting more simple. They want to take the equation out of meeting people. And, and they want to sell their system, their product on how to recruit offline. Hey, look, I, I believe it's a great way and, and I do everything. But I think if you're a person that's outgoing, and you like people, then you should use it. I mean, I was at the, a, a cigar bar just yesterday having a cigar, and I overheard a, a guy talking about talking to another guy about aches and pains in his shoulder and whatnot. And I'm, I'm once again, this is very uncomfortable to me. I got hot flashes thinking about it. I talked myself out of it ten times. Finally, I told myself, "Hey, look, I'm never going to see this guy again. Whether he tells me yes or no, the answer is still no if I don't ask." And so I got up, I went over to him and I started talking about stem cells. You know what? They both perked up. They were both interested and in knowing more. And I had a conversation with them. If I did not do that, I call it three seconds of boldness. I had nothing to lose, everything to gain. And so I forced myself to do things that are uncomfortable. Some of you wouldn't even thought about it. You just jumped up and went and did it. Why? Because that's your personality. So belly to belly is very important aspect. And I would say you do a little bit of everything, a little bit of everything here. Online, very important. I want to go over a couple of things with you guys about online and, and YouTube. I'm just going to pick Facebook because that's where most of the people are. I, money flows where eyes goes. Money flows where eyes go. Where the eyes are, that's where the money is. And so hey, Facebook is very popular. And so if you're on Facebook, didn't do. I did not go in there and talk about X39. I did not go in there and talk about LifeWave. I talk about stem cell activation. I talk about the benefits of the LifeWave product. I don't mention the name because I don't want people Googling it 
and then they're going to find some other person that they might respect more than me or understand, know me more than me or that convinces them to join them because they're better at it than me. And, and therefore, they're just going to Google stem cell. I've got a friend, a really good friend of mine that just texted me yesterday and said, what's the deal with all this, this stem cell activation stuff? And we're doing a Zoom today at noon, uh, U.S. time. See, that's what I want you. I want you to peak curiosity. Peak curiosity in your post. If you're posting about X39 and LifeWave, if the only people on your, your Facebook page are people that you've known for a long time, you know they would never join anybody else, that's different. But you're not going to get where you, you can't be a prophet in your own land. You need to, you need, you can't keep preaching to the choir. You need to expand your reach. And that's what Bill was saying. Maybe if you're a runner, then you find groups on Facebook where runners are. And you go in there, you start liking people, you start friending people, you start adding value to the group. If you're into hang gliding, you go to hang gliding groups. You're into health and wellness, go to health and wellness groups. Start connecting with people that are like-minded like you. Now, if you're like me, you don't have a lot of that, then that's an issue. Then you need to look for other things. I look for network marketers, other network marketing groups. I go in there, I try to add value. I don't do a lot of that because I hunt and pack and I spell bad. And, and, and so I, I do what I do, but still, if you've got 300 friends on Facebook, then of course they're not gonna go somewhere else. But if you start liking and connecting with other people that are like-minded, I know we talk many times about people who are runners here. You can go to running groups. They're health conscious. They're worried about their health. They've got knee pains. They got foot pains, just like you. And so you start adding value, you start commenting. You, you find people, as they participate, they're outgoing. <clears throat> if they participate in the group, they're outgoing. And those are the people you want to contact. Why? Because they're outgoing in their whole life. They're outgoing with other people. They probably have a lot of friends. They have a lot of influence. So you start friending these people. If they go to your Facebook page and all they see is X39 LifeWave down the whole thing, then they're, they're going to not accept your friend request. But if they see you giving value, so there's a couple things. When you are posting on Facebook, you want to build curiosity. But you don't want to just talk about your product. You want to talk about your family. Get people to know, like, and trust you. If you went running today, then go talk about running. If you went hang gliding, if you're baking, if you like cooking, talk about it. I had my Facebook. I made a great shrimp and scallop and, and tuna, uh, 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 like a, uh, a dinner with asparagus. And, and, and I talked about that. And I got a lot of comments on it. People said, what's for dinner at your place? And I had a lot of comments on it. And so talk about you and your family. <clears throat> talk about something inspirational. You can talk about the the uh, give value. If you're back to if you're a cooking, give value. What can you teach somebody about cooking or about running, about how to stretch, about whatever? And I'm not a runner, so I'm not going down there. Uh, pro talk about also your product benefits. Like I said, I don't mention LifeWave. I talk call it stem cell activation, and I give testimonies. And this is very important, you guys. I all I do is give testimonies. So you get, we've got many places you can go get testimonies. If you see a testimony on my Facebook page, don't share mine. Copy and paste it into your wall. And do you make it your own? If you see a video, don't share my video. Download it, put it on your YouTube channel. You want to brand you. You want to keep people on you. You don't want people going to my page, learning about me. You want people going to yours and staying in yours. So I do not share anything. I plagiarism, call it what you want, copy, steal, whatever it is. That's what I do. I'm very good at that. If I see something, I browse some of these pages. I've like, I've, I've taken stuff from, from you, Yanni. I've taken stuff from you, Lydia. I, I take stuff and I copy. I say, oh, that's great. And, and I will, I will change it. And a lot of times they talk about X39. A lot of times they talk about LifeWave. I edit it. I take that out because I want curiosity. I want them coming to me saying, what the heck are you talking about, Vincent? That's what I want. I don't want them Googling it. <clears throat> so add stuff. Talk about what's important to you. Talk about your family, your your recreation. What do you do for a living? So you, you may, maybe one day a week you're talking about recreation, something you do. You might be talking about your family. Um, you might be giving value, adding, adding value to, the, to your community. Your community is your community. Um, product benefits. And then you can also talk about the, the, the business model. Talk about what it's done for you or the people that you know. Hey, would you like to make an extra? You don't have to spill the beans. You want them to what? You want them to contact you. You want to control the point of introduction. This is very important to your success. 
You cannot control whether people join you or not, but you can control the point of introduction. So you control that by them asking you about it and now you control it. You can get them on a Zoom, you can watch the video together, you can, you can share with them your testimony of this product and this business opportunity. And so you control the point of introduction and how you share this product with people. When you go out there and friend people, don't message them and say, I get it all the time, I got one yesterday. Somebody just reached out to me, they, they connected with me on Facebook, sent me a friend request, I looked at the wall, it was nothing but their business on there. But I, 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 I accept this as friends from, because they were a friend of a really good friend of mine. And the first thing this lady did was send me a, a instant message telling me about her product and introducing and asking me if I was interested. I mean, didn't even say hello. It's like, I'm not gonna say that. Um, it, it, at least make a friend with me. And so I wanna encourage you not to, to, to if you've got it on your face, go in, you can clean it up. You can go back in your page and, and, and clean up and, and create curiosity. Because why? Maybe the 300 people that you do have connected with on, on social media, maybe they know you and they've seen it, but you're not gonna go, you're not gonna go to the moon on 300 people. So you need to continue to add to it. If, if once again, if social media is not your thing, then do belly to belly if that's your thing. Google, I love cold calling. I cold call people all the time. I, especially in the United States, real estate agents are the easiest group of people to get their cell phone number. And I'll cold call them and say, hey, Martha, I see you're in real estate. Hey, really quick, just wanted to ask you something. Do you keep your options open for business opportunities outside of real estate? Some are gonna say yes, some are gonna say no. Well, that's ridiculous, Vincent, you're not gonna get people. Hey, it doesn't bother me if they say no. I know if I say that to enough people, some of them are gonna say, yeah, what do you got? Because why? Because real estate agents are networkers. That's what they do for a living. So in the United States, I, I built a lot of my businesses on real estate agents. And <clears throat> so cold calling may be a thing for you. If you're good at that, then do it. I like to do a little bit of everything. I do more of the things I'm good at and less of the things I'm not. So social media, um, YouTube videos. YouTube is the number one and number two search engines in the world are Google and YouTube and they're owned by the same company. So use that if you're good at, at, and once again, it's very important to understand, you don't have to have that look to be good at, at, in, in, in video. I want you to understand something that's very important. Everybody has a tribe. I don't care who you are, what you look like, you got this, you're overweight, you're short, you're five foot tall and five foot around. I don't care if you got this look or that look or this disability or that disability. I'm not good looking. I don't have the, the you know, the, the looks of some of the people that I see on YouTube, but it doesn't matter because me, even as horrible as I am, there are people that will be attracted to me because of whatever reason. I was watching YouTuber videos the other day and it was driving me nuts because of the way he re reacted. I didn't, I'm not going to listen to that guy. I've got another guy that I've known for a long time. I don't like him and I don't even know why. I have no idea why and I've known him for 25 years and I see him all the time and I just don't like him. <clears throat> and I'm trying to like him, I'm being compassionate, I'm, being, I'm getting rid of my, out of myself. But the reality is we all attract to certain people. And so you have that as well. And if, if, if you can get out of your own way, because that's the best way. Once again, you're not going to talk about LifeWave. You're not going to talk about X39. What are you going to talk about? You're going to give value. Teach people. When I, right now, I'm recording this. Why? Because I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel. I've got my phone here. Bill's recording it. I've got me there, and I'm recording it. Why? Because I'm going to edit it, and I'm going to put it on my YouTube. I'm going to put it on Facebook. I'm going to put it on Instagram. I'm going to put it on, on LinkedIn. I'm going to use this as a tool to give value to people to not talk about their product and how to use their product, whatever that product is, and give value. And what's gonna happen? Some people are gonna like what I say. Some people are not, some people are, and they're gonna subscribe and they're gonna, they're gonna uh, uh, tune in next time and the next time, next. They're gonna watch my content, why? Because I'm like them some way, shape, or form. Your voice, the demeanor, I talk real fast. Some people I talk too fast, they don't like me. That's okay, they're not my tribe. You don't have to talk to everybody. You just talk to the people that, that uh, listen, that hear you. you th uh, that's important. You don't have to talk to everybody. You talk to the people that hear you. If you're into cooking, then you talk about cooking. You're going to attract people to you. And every once in a while, once a week or twice a week, you're going to talk about a benefit of your product, whether it's a testimony or whatever. And, and now people are going to say, what is this he's talking about? That's the key. You want them to ask in you. 
How would you like, would you like to cold call a hundred people a day or would you like, rather have a hundred people a day calling you saying, what do you got? What are you doing? That's the key here. It's attraction marketing, attract people to you. I give value on YouTube online. If that's your, what you do, once again, if none, if you don't like cold calling, if you don't like doing belly belly, you don't like doing social media, you don't like doing YouTube, you're going to have to figure one of them out. You're going to have to do something because it's numbers. If you don't talk to anybody, I promise you, you're not going to grow a business. I'm give you. I'm, I'm going to leave with this really quick, Bill, because I think it's important. Give me knowledge. I built it. The last company I built, the, what was that? Oh, I thought I heard somebody. Anyways, you know me. I get distracted by noises. Um, so I'm going to give you two analogies. Okay, one and how I built a team of over 10,000 people. That's in my personal enrollment tree, not it was put underneath me. So I was committed to my my daily method of operation, my DMO. I was committed to it, and we didn't have the internet, so it was belly to belly. So I set a goal to say say hello to X number of people a day, X number of people a week. I didn't have big goals of 60 days and 90 days, 100 days. I think you should, but you got to cut it down to the only thing that matters is what you do today. Your daily math for operation today. So it comes Sunday and I hadn't completed my weekly goals because uh, I didn't complete all of my daily goals. Failure becomes a habit. Lack of commitment becomes a habit just like success does and just like commitment does. And so I made a determination. I am not going to let this defeat me. And, and the better I got at that, the more consistent I was. And so I went out there and, and I was Sunday night, I could have sat at home. I could have hung out with the wife. Nope. I've got to go out there and say, talk to two more people. So I'm driving around and in the United States, we have open houses and there's signs on the street that say open houses. And so I, did, I, I went past one. I was, I'm done with, it. I'm frustrated. I'm not good at this. I'm going home. And I did a U-turn and I went back to that open house. And in that open house, there were three open houses on that same street. So I went to the first one and, and I'm not a talker. So if I say hello to you, you say hello to me. I say, how are you? You answer with good. None of us are good communicators. So we've got a problem there. I don't have the ability to blah, 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 blah. So I'm a one question, one answer. <clears throat> so the first person I went to, he was the exact same way. No, nothing. So I went to the second house and that pay lady had a client there. They were talking really into talking. So she paid me no attention. And so I left and I said, I'm done with it. I'm going home. I drove out of that housing development. I said, no, Vincent. I saw him in this conversation, I'm beating on the street. Well, no, you, you, you want this. You got this. Go back. Do not quit. And so I did another U-turn. I went into the last house. <coughs> went in that guy's name was Mitch. And I went up to Mitch. I said, how, how are you doing? And he was like, blah, blah, blah. Mitch joined my company. He sponsored one person, a friend of his name, Mitch. That one person, taught, he, Mitch, he sponsored one person, his father-in-law, uh, um, Mitch. No, it was Mitch, Mitch, and, and Don. And Don went out there and sponsored, built a big team. 2,500 people came into my team from those two U-terms. Give you another analogy. Another friend of a guy, I cold called because I was cold calling real estate agents. He was a real estate agent. He also did pool cleaning. And I called him, his name, uh, uh, Jerry Alexander. Called Jerry. And he set up appointments with me to meet at a coffee shop. And, and every time at that appointment, he would call me, hey, look, I can't make it. I'm stuck in traffic. Um, I can't get, get there. He never no-showed me, but he always canceled. For four weeks, he canceled. Finally, one day he showed up. We had a conversation. He liked our product. He liked the company I was with. <clears throat> he goes home and he's he's looking on the video. He's been with me for probably two days. He goes home. He's on his computer. He's looking at the video. The economy here was 2008, 9, and 10 was tanking. His, his son, which swore in his life he would never do network marketing, he hated it because his dad was in every company there was and, 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 and he swore. And so he walks by the screen, he sees this beautiful video explaining his product, he said, what's that dad? And his dad showed him. So he get, he calls me that day, his son does. And he calls me and says, nobody makes any money in network marketing. I said, I can show you that I'm making money. He said, prove it to me. So I said, let's, let's show up, show up at a coffee shop. I opened up my laptop and I showed him. This guy was very, very, um, ornery. He was not a, a, a happy person because why? Because he hated the industry. But I showed him, he said, man, I've never met anybody making money at this before. 
that person, so I, I three no, four no shows, not really no shows, but canceled appointments, but I kept rescheduling because follow up is key. And then that person turned into 5,000 people because his son was known with everybody. He was a mortgage guy, he owned his own mortgage company. He knew everybody. But his son happened to walk by the screen, look at the screen, talk to his, his dad, and I met with him and 5,000 people in the next year and a half. It went boom like rocket ship. Why? Because he liked everybody. He knew everybody. Had all of his friends. I didn't have any of that. But that person did. So two encounters. So all I got to tell you, I look at this and I say, would you be excited if you sponsored you? I would be excited if I sponsored me. Because my drive. If not, if you wouldn't be excited if you sponsored you, then it's because probably you're not doing what you should be doing and go out there and do it. Man, I want to sponsor somebody like that. Is your sponsor still saying the same thing? Ooh, that hurts, huh? 